There is a, a scripture, Hebrew chapter 13, verse 8, that says like this, For Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's an ever-changing the reason why I took this scripture, it is because there is a song, a chorus, that we sing with the same words. You remember that? Yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. How many know it? Oh my Lord. Where do you people come from? She <laughs> must be old. It is a song. Now songs are given to people of God for specific reasons. There are songs that are given to specific people for specific reason. At least that's what I believe. For I believe that every time there is a song springing within my heart, God wants to speak to me somehow, some way. Sometimes he just wants to tell me something, reveal me something, or just maybe remind me of something. It's the song that starts bubbling in your heart. You just can't get rid of it. It is there. You're trying to think of something else, but it's got bubbling up in your heart, and it's there, it's in your mind. You cannot get rid of it. It is a song which is given to you by the Spirit of God. For the songs are given to people to refresh our soul. They are giving to us to encourage us, they're also given to us to worship God. So wherever I have a song in my heart that is bubbling within my soul, these three things come into my mind immediately. Does God want me to encourage me? Does God want me to worship him? Or does God want me to do something else? Then, as this song was bubbling within me, and I went generally, of course, I go to sleep. But before I go to sleep, I couldn't get rid of that song. And a voice said to me somehow, I heard a voice saying to me, just remember. Remember. And I said, what am I to remember? And so I was just thinking of what I was supposed to remember, what God wanted me to remember at that particular time, at that particular night. And my mind went to the year of 1954. I was young then, 21 years of age. I could take over any mountain. I know I could climb it without any problem. The Lord had called me into the ministry and I was so full of the zeal that I could just know that I could do anything in the world. I could tangle anybody. I could talk to anybody. I could preach to anybody. I could climb every mountain. I just could do anything. Of course, when you're 21, you can do everything. So I was to preach that night. And I went, I had an address of a church. As I was preaching in different places, I had a light motorbike, which I used to use to go from one church to another. And this particular day, I went to the address, it's what was given to me. And when I got there, it was at the end, at the bottom of a mountain. And when I reached the place, the man said to me, he said, sorry, sir, but the place of the meeting is up on top of that mountain. And he said, unfortunately, you cannot take your bike 
because there is no pathway of going over there, and the only way to go is to walk. And I said, my God, I don't mind taking the bike, but when it comes to walk, that's a long walk. Nothing I could do. I left all of my paraphernalia. I closed my bike. I left everything to that place. I took my Bible with me. That was something that when I was young, I never lost. I always had a Bible with me. I took my Bible with me, and I began to climb up to the mountain. It was hot. Pharaoh, it was hot. It was the afternoon, and it was so hot that I could hardly make it up to the steep mountain to go up there. Nevertheless, I went. And when I got close to the house where I was supposed to be, the pastor came out. He shook hand with me and he said, welcome to the place of worship. We're going to have a good time tonight into the presence of God. And I said, yes, and I hope so. When we came up, up to the house, he introduced me to the family. And then, well, it was one o'clock in the afternoon and the meal was ready. Not the meal, the meal was ready. And believe me, just the smell of that food, it would draw my mind out of my whatever. It was good Italian meal, prepared specially for the speaker for that night. Now, that was good. Italians are very hospitable, and they believe in having food and, and uh, enjoy around the table. We sat and we began to eat and we spoke about different things and he sh shared me some of the work. But there is one thing that reminded me in my mind and he said, brother, this is harvest time. So please, I don't expect too many people to come tonight because people are tired and they work from sun up to sundown, reaping the harvest that God has given to them. So I don't expect too many people to come. That annoyed me because I was the speaker for the night and I wanted to have people. I didn't want to speak to empty chairs. I would like to have people there. And I said to myself, what kind of a pastor doesn't encourage the people to come to church because it's a special meeting and there is a young... Well, never mind. I was a little sore about that. Never mind, we ate. And he brought me into a room and he said, Brother Roma, this is, will be your room. You can have your siesta before the night and get ready before the night comes for the service. So I went into my room and I sat there, but all I could think is, this is harvest time and not too many people are coming out tonight. And all I could think about me preparing a sermon for just a few people that would come and listen to me for that particular night. And I was... Uh, can't tell you how I was. I was. Now you can feel it yourself, can't you? I'm trying to describe it because I want you to feel the way I felt. I want you to feel what that meeting was all about that particular night. So I went to sleep for a bit. And a knock at the door came. The pastor said, brother, I want you to come outside. It was dark by now. We went outside the door and it was pitch dark. All I could see is the shade of the mountains that surrounded us. And as we were standing there, he said to me, do you see that little light down there coming in that direction? And I said, yes, I do. It must be a farmer's house. Oh, he said, no, there is no farmers there. That is that the people that live in that area who are coming tonight for the service. They are walking for about an hour to 45 minutes walk on the mountain in order for them to come to church. And he said, you see the other light on the other side of the mountain? I said, yes. 
He said those are the people living in that area. They too are coming to church tonight. And they, uh, they only have one light because that's all they need. And they come to the darkness of the night to come to the service tonight. And I said, oh, well, there must be a couple of people there, a couple of people over there. I didn't expect too many people. Then he said there is another group coming from the back of the mountain. And he said they will be here as well. I stood there for a while, and I heard a song ringing through the airwaves. And the song was just yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus is the same. That was the song in which they were singing as they were coming into the service. My friend, what do you sing when you're coming to service every Sunday morning? They were singing that. Jesus Christ, they were expecting something from God. And so I, I heard that song and I heard them singing as they were coming closer by. When they came to the bottom of the mountain, they climbed, they came upstairs. And the place which we were having the service was full to capacity, by the way. And the people were standing all around. And I sat there and I said, Lord, uh, they told me that not too many people were coming. This place is filled with your people. And we are certainly going to have a good time before your presence. So I sat there and I was looking at the people. Their face was wrinkled. Their men were a long beard. They didn't have time to shave because of the harvest time. The ladies have wrinkles in faces that were burned by the sun in which they have been working all day long. And there I was looking at them. They, some of them were young, but they look old because of the, uh, because of the burned face by the sun. And I said, oh my Lord, what a group of people we have. These people have come here because they want to come into your presence. The pastor began to serve us. The, the Spirit of the Lord began to move. The people began to stand up from their chair. And as good Italian ever do, they raised their hands and waving their hands and praising God and glorifying the name of the Lord. My Lord, I was, a I, 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 few minutes before, I was almost downcast. And now all of a sudden, the presence of God came and the people were rejoicing into the Spirit of God. They were speaking in tongues. They were rejoicing in song. They were jumping up and down like if they had never been to work before. And those people had been working for 24 hours on the field under the hot sun. And I was complaining because I just climbed one. <laughs> Made me feel ashamed. It made me feel ashamed. I felt bad. I preached as much as I could. I asked God to help me to preach. And I did. We had a great, great, great time in the presence of the Lord at that time. You know, you can find the scripture to adjust just about anything. When I was roaming myself in, in uh, complaining about not too many people come, I judged the pastor that he wasn't teaching the people the good things. After all, in Hebrew 10, it tells us that not to forsake the assembling together as many in, in, in the manner in which many do. Too many people are forgetting the assembling together. And I grew up in a time of persecution. I remember my father and my mother being able to go to church wherever there was a church meeting. They would not leave it. They would go. Even though they never knew if they were coming back home that particular night, they could have been arrested and probably never come, and sometimes it did happen. But my father would leave me, I was the oldest in the family, he would leave me with a telephone number, and he said, if by certain time we are not here, please call this number. That number referred to a lady somewhere that was living not too far away, and that meant that that lady 
and her husband, they would come and take care of us. There was four of us, and they come and take care of us because my father, if my father and my mother would have been in jail. My friend, sometimes I, 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 I believe that that is the duty of a Christian to be in the house of God at all time and wherever there is an opportunity. It is our privilege to be in the house of God. It is not doing a favor to anyone, but it is a privilege to be in the house of God because we are not to, uh, to forsake the assembling together of the people of God. I can understand why people sometimes, for any reason whatsoever, they just forget to go into the house of God. It seems to be the last thing that people want to go to. Everything else comes, but not, it, not the house of God. While I was preaching in New York, I had a man which I had a problem with. And I, the reason why I had a problem with it is because he was never coming to church regularly. He would come uh, one day and then suddenly you, he, you, 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 you lose him for the next three, four, five months. And then suddenly he pops up again and he comes back to church. And one day I got annoyed with him and I said, brother, I want to talk to you. And he said, yes, pastor, what would you like to say? And I said, uh, why you are forgetting to come to church every Sunday like everybody else should? I mean, after all, I'm, if I'm the pastor, I like to see the chairs filled with the people that I know and that come to the service. And he said to me very frankly, he said, well, pastor, he said, it's like this. I have a TV at home. And the TV at home, like we, there is preachers all over the place. I can hear the best preachers in the country. And he said, and I just sit there and I listen to them. And he said, I get the, bless, the blessings of God just as much as going to church. That is a heresy. It is not true. You can get a blessing by listening to a sermon on TV. But my friend, is a different blessing when you come into the presence of God and you sit next to an angel in which is possessed by maybe a person which is possessed by an angel of the presence of the Lord. It is a different story, my friend. And so he said, that's what I do. So he said, I don't have to come to church. I found that I don't have to come to church. I can survive in my spiritual life just by staying home and watching TV. So I was annoyed for a bit. And then I said to myself, you know, I get annoyed too. Yeah. When I was young, I got annoyed more often. Uh, and uh, so I looked at him for a bit. I didn't know what to say. But I looked at him and I said, it wasn't you. It's, I just pick up on you because you my friend. And, uh, and, uh, and, he, uh, and I, I looked at him and I said, um, well, brother, I'll tell you what. The next time you are sick, don't call me. What, you want, what I want you to do, embrace the TV and let the TV help you. I can be nasty sometimes. <laughs> but it's the truth, isn't it? Isn't that true? TV, I'm not preaching, I'm not talking about against TV programs, which is, speaks about the thing of God. But let us put everything in, in, in perspective. They are there to preach to the unsaved. And if you are saved, you're supposed to be in the assemblies of the saints before the presence of God. And that's what it's supposed to be. True, some will come. Some come through persecution, the Bible said. There is another song, by the way. Some will come by hardship. But the church must always come first. As I was going through all of this in my mind, a knock at the door came. And that's when you get woken up from whatever thoughts you are engulfed with. And thank God that we, are, we have people that come, and I hear 
each one of us, we are coming from different areas, different places, and from different experiences, but we are coming together to share into the presence of God, and that's what we are actually supposed to be. There are churches today that will, will uh, be able to accommodate any kind of mind or any kind of person. It doesn't mean that that church, because accommodates me, it is the best one. Of course not. Because if I go to a place where I can always be satisfied in a certain way that they do what I want them to do, that means that the church is not right because I am not right. People not that's the church is supposed to do what God wants them to do and not what I want them to do. So it is the presence of God that is the most important thing. There are churches today that the preaching is emphasized on the fire of moving of God. Even our own pastor, many times, he preaches about the falling of the fire from the presence of God. And it's good. There are other churches that they preach that you have to be sober and you have to be very, um, very sober and calm down and, and all those kind of things and feel sorry. I had one, one pastor one day uh, coming to me when I was young, of course, coming to me and he said, brother, he said, I like your preaching and everything, but he said, you do not uh, proclaim the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, why not? Because he said, you are always smiling. And Jesus was not smiling. He had a long face. I said, yes, he had too many lemons. <laughs> I can be nasty, you know, if I really feel like. But then I've been called so many other things. So there are churches that are preaching all different kind of things. But there is one thing in which rejoices my soul today right here that we are able to every sunday morning to be able to emphasize the power of the blood of jesus and we are here in this place proclaiming and having communion every more every sunday morning in order that we can proclaim what jesus has done for each and every one of us for it is the blood it is not the fire but it's the blood that cleanses me it is not the it is not the persecution that make, that cleanses me but it's the is the power of the blood that makes makes me clean and makes me eunuch. It makes me completely uh, aware of the presence of God. It is by the blood that I can come into the presence of God. It is by the blood that I can be filled with the presence and the Spirit of God. It is by the blood that the doors of heaven are going to be opened before my eyes because it's through the blood that I can call in my Father. It is through the blood that I have been made a child of God and there is no fear in my heart any longer because the blood of Jesus has made me whole we preach the blood we want the blood we are looking for the blood we want and again we want an experience of a new clean cleansing every day about our life it is the blood it is the blood it is the blood and only the blood that will make us complete. That day, after I finished preaching and after I had the service, when I went into my room to spend the night, I knelt before the presence of God and I said, Lord, I'm young, I'm foolish. I'm stupid in many ways, and I don't know which way to turn. I was too quick to judge your people. They are your people. You are the one who judged them, not me. I have no right of judging them, because they are your people, and therefore you take care of them. And I had to cry before God and say, Lord, I will not judge any longer anybody anywhere, no matter how they are, what they are. They are your people. They are washed with the blood of the Lamb. You are the judge, and you are the one who will take care of them. From that time on, 
I have never judged anybody, no matter what, and no matter what they were doing. There is one thing that always excites me. That is the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. How do you feel this morning? What is your feeling today? How do you feel? Do you feel that you're going through a period of hardship? Let remember that the blood was shed so that the hardship will pass over quick. That uh, the blood of Jesus was shed. Do you feel down this morning or you feel sick? Just remember the blood of Jesus was shed so that you can receive healing before his presence. Healing come not just by the laying hands of pastors and leaders. Healing come by the laying hands of the Spirit of God. It is when the Spirit move that the healing will come. It's when the Spirit move that you are able to jump out of your chair, regardless of what and what you're doing and how you feel, but you'll be able to rejoice before the presence of God. It is the blood. It is the blood of Jesus. I wish and hope that that blood this morning will come once again. And you said, but I was washed many years ago. That was many years ago. You know what? Since then, I've done a lot of stupid things. I need the washing of the blood once more. I need it every day. I need it every morning. I want it every time I get in touch with the presence of God. I want to be washed with the blood of Jesus. What would you like to have? That's, that's a cold, and I, don't wish, and I don't wish that to anybody. I don't wish that to anybody. What can the blood of Jesus do for you this morning? What can he do for me this morning? Remember, you have come here today because you wanted to worship God. You wanted to be together with the saints into the assembly of the saints of God. May God bless you. Come on, Neil. Take over. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. When Joe starts talking about the blood. Amen? Stay here, mate. When he starts talking about the blood, something starts to shift. Amen? We need the blood to wash over us, don't we? We need that cleansing flow. and There's power in the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. You know, there might be somebody here this morning and you just need that refreshing touch. This bloke's 86 years of age. You put, get rid of your book. You don't need that. Just come back here. But I want to tell you, when he starts getting that... <laughs> and his lips start going purple... You know the Holy Ghost, there's something's on him. <laughs> he goes purple and goes many colours. <laughs> Not a, you're, you're back to normal again now. But I, I honestly believe very much in the impartation. I believe in, in opening yourself up to the Spirit of God. From now on, this altar's open of a morning when we, when we begin to worship for people just to come out and stand in the presence of God and worship just to get out of your seat and do something a little bit different. This morning, I just wanted, I was almost there. Almost, God had persuaded me. I almost wanted to just lay before God, get on my face before God, and in humility, humble, whatever, I don't know, stupidity sometimes, but just wanting to somehow or other express my need for Him and uh, pray His hand upon our lives. It's a good thing when you can open up your heart to God and just let, let him come and touch you. And so we're just going to stand to our feet today. And What song are you going to sing? Okay. It's no longer slaves. If we could do that. And, and, and guys and girls, just feel free to come and let Joe pray over you and stir up something on the inside of you. I don't know what it is that you might need. But I, I just know that there's not one of us here that really doesn't need that touch. 
Amen. So just feel free this morning to come and let Joe just minister to you. With a melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance from my song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am